more. So one of the major new things we've added is ambient occlusion technology. Uh, this technology enables us to add much more realistic dynamic shadows to scenes um, using a pixel shader technique. So a pixel shader traverses every single pixel in the scene and looks at how light reflects around and uses that to generate much more realistic shadow highlights on the objects in the scene. You know, so you see much more definition in individual objects and they pop out from the backgrounds. This technique works uh, for characters as well. And we've done significant work on the character pipeline. On the left here you see Marcus Phoenix as he appears in Gears of War. And on the right he's being rendered in our new character pipeline. You see there's much greater contrast in the shadows. Um, much greater specular lighting bouncing off of the thing. You see a lot more detail in the character overall. It is also a lot more efficient and enables us to render a lot more characters in scenes. Now, uh, if you remember in Gears of War, you fought the Locust Horde, where the Horde consisted of maybe like five or six Locusts. But now we can really build scenes containing hordes of creatures. And here we have over a hundred creatures running around in real time using flocking technology. We've also improved the water technology on Unreal Engine 3. Besides the realistic water physics simulation running underneath, we also have realistic specular and environment reflections bouncing off of the water. So it captures much more of the realistic liquidy feel you see there. You also have more dynamic interaction with the water, so more realistic sound effects, more realistic splashes using particle systems. And this scales to very large environments. So you can build your game taking place on a deserted island, or you can build that jet skiing game you always wanted to build using Unreal Engine 3. The engine now scales to much larger scenes like that. Now, a matinee is the system we use to build all of the Gears of War cinematics, you know, the real-time cinematics that play back in engine. We've uh, substantially improved this to give, uh, to give artists movie director class control over all of the objects in the scene, over cameras, over cuts. And we have a real-time preview now in engine that gives you all the visual effects of the real cinematic uh, at a level that's not even seen in Hollywood now in their preview tools. We've also incorporated AGIA's soft body physics simulation tool, uh, which enables us to, so, to simulate objects that are realistically elastic and fluidy, like you see with this cube of meat we built here. You, know, you can see the player can interact with that, push little pieces of it around, and it's all very elastic and buoyant. This also scales well to fluids. So here you have fluids moving around with viscosity and surface tension, retaining their shape. This enables artists to build environments that are much more organic and real worldish. You can also destroy them. So the, the thing that we do after, after we spend a few years building a beautiful game world, the first thing gamers want to do is blow it up. And now they can do that. So we've implemented some real-time structural analysis tools in Unreal Engine 3 that can determine how objects break apart into pieces given stresses and strains. And here we've applied that so that we have a, a building built out of concrete with a steel structure underneath. And you can see the player can go around and blow holes in the concrete, destroy the structure of the level while the steel remains underneath. This is just one of the tools that enables designers to create far more realistic and destructible environments in future games. And these are just 